probably the most controversial Halloween movie, and I kind of like it. Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. Yeah, we've gotten to this point in the series. Um, I'm just gonna say right off the bat, <laughs> I really like this movie a lot. Now, is this movie good? No, it is not very good. It's actually really, really bad. Um, is it a lot of fun? Oh, hell yeah. This movie is one of those kind of movies where it's just, you know it's trashy, you know it's not good for you, but you consume it all the much, and it's just, yeah. It's like a movie like, um... Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, Sixth, Freddy's Dead. You know those. You know that movie's bad. You know you're not supposed to watch it and like it, but you do because it's fun and it's stupid. Um, that's what this movie is to me. Um, it is just a ton of fun and it's just so stupid. And there's a lot of stuff to go into with this movie. Um, because, oh yeah, this is gonna get. Oh, this is gonna get complicated. Okay, so. Let's get into this movie. What's this movie about? Well, you got um, uh, Michael Myers, of course, coming back to haunt the citizens of Haddonfield. This time, um, uh, he, at the end of the last movie, uh, you know, he escaped prison with the Men in Black, which didn't get explained. Um, what we didn't see was that Jamie got taken with him. And then we go into this plot that's very disgusting because Michael is technically Jamie's uncle. Um... Michael had a kid with Jamie. <laughs> um, why did he have a kid? Because it's a cult. He's involved with this cult that sacrifices people until the person who's doing it um, for Sam Hayen um, just can't do it anymore, I guess, so they have to get someone else. That's what they do in this movie. Um, and it is very, very strange, <laughs> to say the least. It is uncomfortable, that plot like this. Um, it's actually very uncomfortable. I don't like watching it. <laughs> um, at least that opening scene, because it's just like, oh, you just know the context, and it's just terrible. They did have a new actress play Jamie in this movie. Um, they didn't bring back Jamie Lloyd. Uh, so, no, not, well, they did bring back Jamie Lloyd. They didn't bring back uh, Daniel Harris. Um, had a new actress, and she was okay for like the two seconds she was on the screen, because, well, guess what? After all, hell breaks loose, and Michael puts a lady on a freaking pike. Um, well... <sighs> Jamie dies, and it is very, very anticlimactic, in the same way that it was anticlimactic that her sister from part 5 died. Yeah, it is one of those kind of deaths, and it's not very handled, it's not handled very well, um, to say the least. It's quite annoying, because, um, um you set up Jamie to be this, like, really important character, and you could have had her be this character in this movie, like, she could have been the main protagonist, but, no, they bring in other characters, and it's just, ugh, it's annoying. Anyway, but the devs she gets is kind of really well handled, so I'll give it a pass on that front. Um, we then come to this new family, uh, Kara Strode and her family, um, and her son Danny. Um, her son Danny's being haunted by, I believe, the man in black? It's not really explained. Um, and yeah, he's have she's having troubles with her dad because he's an asshole and he abuses her and all this stuff, and... Yeah, and they were living in the Myers, in the Myers house because, I don't know. <laughs> and they're like, oh my gosh, there's people that, that, like drawing stuff in the house and like being all mad at us. And this is like, of course they would. You're living in the Myers house, you dumbasses. But anywho, uh, Kara is an okay character, I guess. She's alright. Um, she's not a perfect protagonist, but she is. She does do okay, I guess, Um, in this film. I don't know. She's just kind of there. Um, and then we get introduced to another character, Tommy Jarvis, or not Tommy Jarvis, Tommy Doyle. I got so, okay, for some reason I was thinking about Friday the 13th. Um, Tommy Doyle, and this is Paul Rudd's first movie, and Paul Rudd in this movie is kind of sort of a lot of fun. <laughs> um, he's definitely doing something strange with the performance, but he's not doing something like inherently bad, I would say. I think it's still a lot of fun, the performances. It's not, like, perfect or anything, but, I mean, still, it is a lot of fun. It's just kind of, you know, he's just, especially this scene where he has to give the baby over to Michael, and he goes, the baby is yours, or whatever. I don't know, it's just, he's really dumb in this movie, but he's fun. Um, he's, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely Paul Rudd, that's for sure. Um, but, yeah. 
And what's the, I didn't even get to the plot about this movie. I guess because it was about the sacrificing thing. But they wanted Danny to be the new Michael, basically. This cultist, this cult of Thorn. Which, if you saw the last movie, you saw Michael with a little tattoo on his wrist, which appeared out of nowhere. And that's the cult of Thorn symbol. And they, that's what they want with this. That's what they want with Kara Strode. That's what they want with Danny. Barbara gets thrown into the mix because he gets a hold of Jamie's baby. They also want Jamie's baby. <laughs> it's a lot. Um. Yeah, Loom this is Loomis's last movie, uh Dr. Loomis. Um uh, yeah, he is definitely he's in this movie one. He's not in it too much, um, which is kinda sad, uh, because this was Donald Pleasance's last role last time playing the character. And I believe this was his last film, which is sad because he passed soon after this movie. And I'm gonna get into why they kinda disrespected the fuck out of him in this one. Um, but yeah, he was very um he he was definitely Loomis Loomis. He wasn't like as crazy as he was in the first one. Or part five, but I mean, he still is Loomis, and it's great to see him in this movie. Who is the man in black? Who oh, it gets revealed it is Dr. Wynn, which is the person who taught Michael how to drive in the first movie, which is a pretty big deep cut. Um, but whatever, who cares? Um, yeah, it's, I don't know, it's just kind of a plot twist for the sake of there being a plot twist. Um, yeah, let's get into the controversy of this movie. Oh, but when I was before, let's get into the kills. Um, stepdad, his kill is great because he's a piece of shit, uh, so he gets put into his electronic, his head blows up, it's great. Uh, there's this kill in the laundromat, that's cool. There's, um, uh, this kill in, there's a bunch of kills in this hospital where the strobe light is happening, which is crazily done very, very well, in my opinion. Um, I like that scene a lot. Not just because it's violent, but just because it's just really, really well handled. Um, yeah, so that's the kill. So let's get into the actual <laughs> controversy of this movie. This movie was not originally going to be how this movie is. Like, if you the standardized version you can get out there. For one, there was this cut of this movie called Halloween, the origin of Michael Myers. This movie had a ton of different cuts. I went into a few of them on this channel before. But I'm not going to go to them now because, I mean, yeah. But they're vastly different. So basically, Miramax and company could not decide on what the hell they wanted this movie to be. Uh, so they changed the title a bunch of times. It went from Halloween to Curse of My uh, the Origin of Michael Myers to Halloween 666 to Curse of Michael Myers and this Halloween to Curse of Michael Myers. Um, but yeah, that's not the end of it. There's a producer's cut of this movie. Um, a different cut out there that is infinitely just a little bit more enjoyable because the editing in this movie is god awful. Um, it's cut together like a music video, and it's just it's terrible. Um, but yeah, the um, uh, the actual other parts of this film are definitely. Yeah, uh, the producer's cut is something, um, because it does go deeper into the whole Michael incest plot, which is not very comfortable at all, but it also improves a lot of things like the editing, it fleshes out the story more, you get more time with Loomis, because they originally cut out Loomis out of this movie, why is Loomis not in this movie a lot? Well, that's because they screened the movie for 14 year old boys, and they said they didn't like Loomis, so they cut him out, and I was so damn disrespectful. And it's stupid and I hate it. Um, but that's what they did in this movie. But then in the producer's cut, he's restored to being in it, ha having a screen time, which is definitely welcomed for the character who's been in this franchise since the beginning. Um, it definitely is a lot more respectful in that way. But yeah, um, and the ending of this, the ending of the actual movie was, um, uh, not the actual one, but the theatrical cut was, oh, Loomis screams, cut to a pumpkin in the movie, and he's like, what the hell? Okay, what? Why? Hmm, whatever. But the producer cut for flesh of things out. The reason why he screams is because he goes, he finds Michael laying on the floor. Not Michael, it's actually Dr. Wynn in the Michael costume. Michael gets away as the man in black. Loomis becomes Michael's new caretaker because he gets a coat of thorn symbol on his hand and on his wrist. And then the scream happens and then the movie ends. And it's a better ending. Um, It makes more sense. Why did they cut that scene? I have no idea, but it is, I don't know. But this movie, as much as I've ranted about it, it's not terrible. It's just kind of there. It's not a bad movie by any means. I mean, it is a bad movie. But it's one of those trashy horror movies where the kills are great. Characters aren't. Um, but the movie itself is just a ton of fun to watch. And I'll always stand by that. That I do really enjoy Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. And I will probably give this movie about... If I was to give it a critical score, it'd probably be about like a D. But if I'm going to give this an actual score, I'll give this movie about a C. So yeah, tell me in the comments what you guys thought of this review. Tell me what you thought about Halloween 6, the curse of Michael Myers. And yeah, next time we should be doing H2O. For that, I do want to 
talking about how the new Hellraiser movie because yeah <laughs> and I do want to talk about Marvel's Werewolf by Night I think those would be really fun to talk about Hellraiser because I of course reviewed all the other movies Werewolf by Night is because it's Marvel I should probably talk about it um so yeah I'll see you guys next time <music>